Alrighty guys, uh, it's been a couple weeks I think since I did a video because I've been busy trying to get the systems in. Um, I think last video I said that uh, this week, which is the week of the 13th, is our anniversary week. Uh, the 14th of the anniversary will be, me and Jen will be married 30 years. And the following weekend we're taking the van up to the Kelowna area. Um, no reservations, just wing it. There's tons and tons of camp sites up there uh, that we're just gonna go since we are now uh, fully systemed. All right, so let me get some updates. So I still don't have all the lights up, but I started getting this, the ceiling, this front part of the ceiling done. I will start working on this part of the ceiling probably this week because I need to get the shower curtain hung. Um, I also, we're was struggling with the cabinets on how to keep them from rattling. Um, well, how best to close them. I showed you guys how I have a little uh, bevel in this head. And what I finally ended up doing was just putting some simple, simple little hinges like I have in the camper, like this up here. Sorry if it looks wacky because they close nice and tight. So I have two on each cabinet. They're only like, I think $9 on Amazon. Um, so all four of them have that. I also put, I mean, with this light, don't have all the lights put away. I also put uh, a lock. It's a spring-loaded um, thing here to hold the bed back. Uh, this piece of ply right here on this side of the cabinet is three-quarter inch. I knew I was going to need a thick piece to support this right here. So I went ahead and put three-quarter inch thick there. Um, again, the cabinets are done there with the uh, locks. I also have here a uh, backsplash. Is that what you might want to call it? It also has some of our controls. So you can see this right here is our fresh water gauge. It shows a quarter. This is the water pump. This is the water heater. It uses 120. So I just went ahead and decided to go with a plug. I mean a 120 switch. Right here is the control for the valve for the gray tank so I can open and close the gray tank valve from up here and then here is the gray tank level uh, right here this GFCI is uh, a circuit all by itself um, I might extend it and put a plug down below but I don't think I'm going to but it's it's gonna be for our air fryer or our electric um, inductive stove skillet whatever you call it um, I also have on the back uh, I guess I'll show little things here. This here is our water inlet. This right here is our water inlet for the fresh tank. And this GFCI is connected to the switch. So I, this is always on with when the inverter is on. And the switch is after this. And then I have the water heater plugged into the, so that the switch controls the plug where the water heater is. Over here, you can see I don't have it painted. Um, this is our AC panel. It says water heater, but basically that's the only thing that's on. That that plug and the uh, water heater's on that plug. Appliances is the plug that's up there on the, the cabinet. I have two more that I'm probably going to bring one to the left over there. And I might actually put a plug down here. We'll see. Um, okay. In here. Let's talk about... Let's talk about the water a little bit. So we have a 33 gallon fresh water tank. It's, it's uh, being held in with the 80-20 here. I have some paper towels here and there because I'm really monitoring for leaks. I thought the best way to kind of see is just put a paper towel there and if it gets a drop of water or a little bit damp, I'll, we'll check it out and see what the leak is. So this is a, okay, it's an ISO temp uh, water heater. This is marine grade. I watched a guy talking about how you use this versus the little Bosch rectangular ones. Those Bosch rectangular or little square ones, they're kind of made for standing still. And this is made for motivating, you know, marine in a boat or in a vehicle. Um, it also has a lot of insulation in there. It's a four gallon hot water heater. So I thought that if it's heavily insulated, um, it's made for moving around. I don't have to worry about uh, stuff inside flopping around because if you're putting this on a boat you're probably you know jumping around on waves and whatnot 
and then we'll come this way a little farther um, so you can see I have PEX connections I still have to connect this part right here this right here is the relief or overflow so I'm gonna run this over I'll show you how I've connected to the uh, gray tank and up here you can see the plug for the this plug is on the switch um, and then I have here the water pump the accumulator connected to the PV uh, I'm sorry the PEX and over here I have a Culligan water filter I'm gonna move this water filter back over here I had it here initially but I had the wrong connector here I was just using a regular PEX connector and it was really a short connection right here and it was causing this hose to kind of bind or not be straight enough and then the PEX connector like back here was too small so it let air in so this thing was like a like when you drink with the broken straw where in the straw break is outside the liquid it just was like sucking air so it wasn't getting uh, pressurized so I'm gonna go ahead after I retested this and put a new fitting on here to fit the, this hose better um, since this is non pressured I just use this flex I will move it back over here so I can have space here for drawer cabinet whatever you want to call it um, in the back so what I'm using the mount back here is this is all three quarter inch ply I wanted something very sturdy and you can see I mounted it with these little square brackets to the 8020 on both sides and this guy right here has got actually three sets of mounts holding it um, down here is the hot for the air, uh, refrigerator which is up here I made a little uh, temp drawer I haven't put the face plate and all that stuff yet but I will um, I was really trying to get the water systems in so that we could take it again the weekend of the 17th I guess it is up to Canada and be you know off-grid not worry about it. brush your teeth wash your face um, I'm gonna again I'm gonna try to get this ceiling right up there where the fan is done this week so I can uh, put the shower curtain on so the shower the shower is the Terra van shower um, the dog's beds in the way right now but I'm gonna lay it down here anyways so it just comes down flat it lays down like this and it would be flat on the floor but the dog's beds in the way and then this is the shower head you can move it up you can hang it up high or whatever the case may be they give you another connector like this uh, right here they give you another connector like this in the when you order it which I should is very expensive so that you can mount it on the ceiling and you could point it down um, and then I had to come up with something so my big oh, it's very heavy because it's like 18 gauge steel it's, it's it think it ain't gonna break on it when you step on it so this uh, water thing the hole I had to drill in the floor to get the to the gray tank caused me much anxiety it was probably the most anxiety thing I've done because you have to measure underneath and project that measurement up top which is um, if you're skilled at that then it's probably easy no big deal I'm not skilled at this I've never done that thing so the concern was where my cabinet my cabinets are narrow so I can have lots of space here so my wife and I can cross back and forth by each other without having to you know bump each other which is not a bad thing sometimes but we don't want to have to um, so I, so the cabinets are not very deep they're only 19 inches from the front edge of the bar to the back edge the back side so they're pretty narrow and that was on purpose again so we could have more space in the middle because uh, the van is already tiny um, space and the feel of openness even in this small vehicle is a lot to us we like the feeling of open space our our house has feels very open I mean it, that's just the way we like it so we want to make as much space here as we can and normally a lot of people that'll have these things right here they might put them at the end of the cabinet because usually cabinets I think are like 24 inches thick or wide and this guy is 22 inches wide but it won't fit at the end of mine so I put it right here so that's how it comes so that what that meant was the hole um, when I'd initially built this cabinet you can see right here there's a little step this step used to not be here these two were lined up evenly 
but the hole was coming right down on one of the support beams of the frame. Obviously that won't work. Uh, so I had to move this, this, this part of the cabinet one inch forward and then I managed to drill the hole through and get down. Now I only want to put one hole. We have a sink and we have this guy. This guy, the, uh, let me see. I'm gonna see if I can get this down here so you can see it. So I hope you can kind of see the the drain is right in here. This is basically a, a gutter like on your house and all the water comes into here and this when the thing is laying down when the shower pan is flat these little holes allow the water to drain into the gutter and then they go down the hole straight through to the floor through the floor. Now what I have down below is I have the gray tank hooked up and receiving this water. So the problem is I have two waters that drain, the sink and the shower. Um, so I have to drain the sink somehow. And what I decided to do was to use just half inch line from the bottom of the faucet, the sink, uh, you know, the bottom of the sink. Even though I know it's not plumber plumbing correct and all that other stuff, I don't think that we're gonna be sending that much water through it, we're going to be conserving water. That's the whole point. We only have 33 gallons. We're not going to be just like lollygagging there, brushing your teeth. That's going to be turn on, you know, wet your toothbrush, brush, or turn on, wet your face, get done. So what I did was I uh, made a hole to connect the uh, sink to the back of the shower pan. Um, I used the half inch um, line. I'm kind of slowing because I'm thinking about it, but I used a half inch line. What I did, I had to buy a, a, a tap set, half inch pipe fit, and I'll show you here. And then because the water comes out, if I have the pan closed, the little holes are exposed so that the water from the sink was were actually hitting it and coming out onto the floor. So I ended up uh, caulking the three holes by where the, the hole is, where the uh, faucet drains. I'll show you in a second. So that way you can plug them up and then it'll be fine. Let me show you real quick. So right down here, this is the, the back of a, a, a hose nipple, I guess you call it. I don't know, it's a half inch pipe right here. And this are the holes. See, these are the holes that are normally exposed. And this right here is just the tape from their side. And right here, I just put some uh, silicone caulk to cover these three because the water was coming out running into this side of the pan and then hitting here when it's closed I'll show you what it looks like closed again I'll go ahead and take this off let them dry um, so it was running into these holes and then they would sometimes drip out and splash as we were running the sink so that's the big update I think it's uh we're in a really good spot I'm probably gonna dramatically slow down on the van work it's probably going to be just getting the ceilings finished so i can final, finalize the lights right now when we're driving around the lights that are hanging there are banging on everything and everything that rattles and bangs drives me crazy so i hate rattles and bangs and noises so i will uh fix that um, i'll probably get those things done um again i need to get this part especially where the shower is so that i can we can take a shower um, I'm going to leave this exposed right now so I can really keep our, we can keep our eye on the water system, make sure it's not leaking. Um, it could be after we drive it, something gets loose or whatever the case may be. I want to make sure we're aware of it before it becomes a cat catastrophe because we haven't seen it. Um, oh, the hot water heater uses 750 watts. Um, and, I, and it, it so when we drive, the whole idea, what they tell you to do with it is when you go drive, especially when we have our, uh, DC to DC charger and it brings in about 700 800 watts um, drive get the water hot and then it's gonna stay hot and while you're driving you're still just using your DC to DC effectively to heat your water now this water heater allows me to connect it to the water system of the vehicle so it can actually heat it with the the regular heating system the water cooling system that wa the van has I don't think I'm gonna do that but who knows? The future is uh, unknown. Um, but the point is, 
while we're driving, the water heater gets hot while we're going to our destination. Let's say it's an hour. We drove it today. It took us like a half hour. And by the time we got to our half hour drive, the water heater was off. And I knew it was off because I looked on my phone app for the battery and it was the the system was only pulling like three amps versus 58 or 70 amps or something that was pulling. Um, I haven't checked the water. It's been a couple hours. So I'll go ahead and check the water real quick and see uh, if it's still warm. Because it's been, uh, I warmed it up at uh, about one o'clock or maybe yeah about one to two and it's now uh seven so give me a second here all righty so let me see um what what the water heater does if, uh, if it's got enough warm water again it's been oh yeah i can definitely feel the warm water i don't have it turned up super high for hot water it's warm and it's been uh i think it's seven so it's been about six hours it's been about six hours since the water heater's been on, and uh, it's warm. I mean, it's not hot. Then again, I didn't let it. Uh, I didn't. I don't have the water heater set the high. But, but hey, I, I guess I'll show you again. So my faucet. This is my little. Uh, uh, what do you call it? My restore, restore faucet. I'm sorry. This is my restore faucet, and it has the little sprayer mode, and I can it outside if I want to reach over here and go out there and spray if I want to um, works pretty good shower works great it has a great uh, um, spray power it feels nice so and then over here this little cabin I had Jen mark some places she wants some shelves gonna have a shelf here and one down here so we'll you know use it for who knows blankets or what have you um, all in all, oh, so the other thing I'm going to try to get done this week before our trip is we're going to put our windows. I got, you know, the, the driver, the like 10 by 33, I think CRL or whatever windows. So I got the two. I'm actually not so concerned about those nearly like I was the floor. Don't ask me why. It was uh, the floor. The floor hole was driving me crazy. It uh, One night I couldn't fall asleep till like three. Then the next morning I woke up at seven thinking oh my god i'm gonna have to do this hole but it was not a big deal just that's the whole point you make a lot out of it and you uh do it and it's done so anyways guys i hope you liked the update and uh let me know what you think give me a comment or not it's up to you and uh wait, wait for our next one we'll go up to Kelowna and have a really cool time i know we're gonna have a great time so you guys have an awesome uh, week and we'll see you next time ah uh, one of the other updates I got on the on we got here is I went ahead and put the lights under here. I had to order eight more, and the lights on this side here. Um, they're on the dimmer, so I can dim them and everything. But I thought we needed some workspace lighting. Duh. Again, I just go through it. It's really hard for me to think, you know, planning on every little bit. I have to uh, effectively stumble through it. Um, my sister's the big PM project manager planner. I'm not. Uh, I, I can't have anything. I don't have anything written down other than like notes on stuff I want to do. All right, guys. We'll see you.